All right, so this is a video that a lot of people have asked for, and uh, it's, it's, hey look, this is the thing everybody has to deal with at some point in time, is installing a transducer on your boat, whether it's a, it's a brand new unit or if it's an old unit you wanted to add something to. Um, I'm more supposed to specifically talk about a side imaging transducer, whether that's Humber, Lowrance, Garmin, does not matter. Um, this one right here is a Lowrance HD transducer, um, active imaging HD transducer, but like they all, have about the same sort of sort of system that I, d I go through to ultimately install those transducers. Um, you're gonna need, for me, I'm gonna need a drill, okay? The Phillips head, I'm gonna need some, some silicone um, caulk. Um, now, I don't have, I actually have light gray right now, which is not the best, but my boat's light gray, so it'll work, but um, normally I'll go with clear. Something simple right there. Um, you a pilot hole bit if you don't already drill through this, so that way you don't strip out your, your screw. Um, and that's pretty much, I mean, if you really want to do it the right way, you're gonna need, you're gonna need something to run, a snake to run your wire up into the boat, into the console. We're just gonna run over the top today, just for more sort of example um, sake, more, more so than anything. Um, but really just a handful of things. And then we'll go more in depth on exactly why and where I place the transistor, which is probably more what you guys are gonna to wanna to know about than anything. So, you got me right here? Yeah. All right, so I did find that silicone um, that I was looking for. This is like the advanced silicone. It's like a GE, 100% waterproof. Like that's what I use most of the time. Something clean, something simple. Also, you get that at Lowe's, Tar not not Target, but Lowe's or like anywhere like Lowe's or Home Depot for the most part. I get one of these, and I normally like buy a couple of them. You can cut it right here. Let's take some. They are right there, just cut them. I don't really get too specific with it, but I'm, I'm actually replacing a three in one, old three in one right now. But, um, so I'm trying to sort of get him together first. So I'm gonna take some of these zip ties first and cut some of them. Now, before we get into this, this, this bracket's a little bit different. So if you're replacing transducer, this bracket's completely different than this bracket. So I, my, my holes don't line up. So like one thing that I'll probably do in this scenario, I could, I'll, I don't know, I'm gonna have to look and see if, the only thing I gotta sort of see is if, um, I typically, if I take screws out, ten, like until the end of the season, I'll put a screw with some silicone in there to just sort of like make it to where I don't have a leak. That's sort of what I do if there's a screw hole. That way, it sort of just stays out of the way. I'd like to have a smaller profile screw than this guy, but I think we're gonna sort of, I actually might be able to get away with a little, a little smaller profile screw with some silicone. We'll see. So, another thing is, something I've learned my lesson from, is when I'm installing, especially in fiberglass or anything like that, stripping screws, I'll, I'll go at a lower setting on my drill, just ultimately to where, hey, if I, I'm not gonna strip that screw out. It really stinks if you have a stainless steel screw and you strip it out and you only had one, like actually the one that came with it, like that really stinks. So I start off slow, learning from experience, and then I'll you know work my way up to the actual power that I need. This guy right here is just more of a, I'm gonna put it right there for right now. Um, I don't like the way it hangs down. That was my only problem. I'd like to bring it up. Angle of light, you really can't mount right here. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna try to determine right now is where the best mounting position for my boat is. This right here, obviously this is my Icon boat that I've been running um, this whole season. And so one thing, each boat sort of, sort of changes a little bit depending on if you're putting two transducers on, if you're putting one. Um, a lot of people will ultimately put, if you're gonna put one transducer, they put it like sort of center of your jack plate, sort of like just like the center of the boat. Um, typically for me, um, either I'm gonna put it on the right side of the jack plate or I'm gonna put it like underneath it to the right side, just sort of like it's something that, I, it's not, it's more preference. Um, and then I have two, normally I'll have two transducers, I'll probably put one right over here as well. Um, same sort of deal, like boom, boom. 
I can put them on each side of the jack plate uh, and make sure they're, they're the same the same level. Um, say, the same like same level ultimately to where they're not blocking the transducer and whatnot. So, but distance is definitely helpful when you're you're mounting two transducers on over one typically because then it gives you a little more room for your your beam to sort of shoot down and not sort of get in the way of each other. So I try to space them out a little bit more. But in this case, we're only putting one transistor on and I'm trying to determine how I want this to be. Hmm, I could put it right here, just next to it. But I don't know if I really want to. What I might actually do, we'll sort of see what's up. But See up there, Brody, there's that, um, what's his name? I might actually try to, I might. No, I'm trying to think about this for like a, I'd like to just put it on top of it. Like if I just spray this in there, you know? Mm -hmm. So my goal would be to like squirt it in there and just, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That way I have it there and it's sort of there. There, I, that should work. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna put that inside of that, because I want to utilize that spot, you know. Okay. I'm trusting that my angle, my jack plate's correct. Right there, I'm gonna try that. The other thing that I will do, okay. So, the one thing that I will try to do in this particular situation is there's three holes that I will try to, you know, well, well mounting hole, mounting like slides basically. So I try to drill in each set the center of each one. So if I need to sort of adjust one side over the other, that's basically just allowing you to adjust your your angle of your transducer. So say I, I mess up and I, I drill it on, you know, or I mess up and, and my angle's a little off, I can sort of adjust that a little bit and tighten it up and, and lock it in there to, to really adjust my angle and have the perfect angle um, in, on, on my transducer. So that's what I personally do, just sort of a safety factor for me to where I'm not messing something up, okay. Ideally, what I'll do is put a little bit of silicone out here just to sort of give me a little bit of something to put this guy to stick to. Sometimes it'll help. There. That should be good right there. Let's just sort of see if that eighth will work. Hmm. Okay, so I'm, I am pretty solid right there though. So let me clear, let me first grab this rag. So just sort of see what's going down. So like I'm not tightening all the way down just because That's about right right there. Okay, so I used a level to ultimately get a position of exactly where I want her to be at. Now I can sort of back to some of these screws off just a smidge. I'll have to redo that just a little bit. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so I'm backing off a little bit. is messing it up a little bit. So, so it wants to be down a little bit more. So the right side needs it. That's about, you don't have to be perfect, it's the thing. 
really cool. So the next thing on our list to do, we mounted um, the mounting bracket to the back of the boat. It's all there, it's level, it's all good to go. Next thing we need is a screwdriver. Um, I'm, I, you can use a drill, but you're gonna have a chance of stripping it out when you're talking about, I think these are like $800 transducers. It's like eight, 900 bucks or something like that. I don't even know, it's not, it's not cheap. The transducers are not cheap no matter what you get, so. Taking your time, screwdriver, locking up. That's interesting how this, how this, this comes off of there though, compared to like, it's actually a smarter design because like over the Lorance, the last Lorance is always from here, which are, you could get kinked in between there, but this wire will come up and theoretically should not get kinked as easy or messed up as easy. You hit a little log or something and crush it right here. I've done it, trust me. Not like, because I don't want to do anything that could potentially bust the crystals in the transducer, but just tight enough to where it's firm. All right. Good to go, grab a couple of these guys. What I'm going to do is I'm just basically putting this over the top cap of the boat. The one thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do, so like what I recommend is zip tying your loose wire, so I'll like even like zip tie it over here after I sort of zip tie it down there to where your excess wire um, doesn't get loose and then guess what happens? gets loose, you get to run in, the wire goes back out there and your prop cuts it in half. How do I know that? You guys know, from experience, from experience. So I'm trying to teach you guys some of the things that I've done that I've learned from, let's put it that way. Okay, let's see. Get this started, bada bing, bada boom. perfectly level. All right, so we just got our transistor installed. Um, I'm making sure that it's level, but I'm gonna explain to you guys one thing that it, 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 at least this is, this is tried and true for me. Um, it's something that I personally uh, have seen make a huge difference, especially talking about down skin. So instead of explaining to you guys exactly what I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna explain to you guys on the whiteboard exactly how this angle can really make a difference in whether you're getting a good image or not. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so let's first draw an image of our boat, okay? This is how it's sitting in the water, perfectly horizontal. Theoretically, um, back here is where our transducer is ultimately gonna be mounted. Now, I used to mount my transducer, this is my transducer right here, perfectly horizontal. Now, that's not gonna affect your down imaging image, but or your side imaging image, but it can affect your down imaging um, or down scan or whatever you're using. And I'm gonna show you why. So at say one mile an hour, your boat is pretty much gonna sit pretty horizontal. About the most horizontal it's gonna be. It's slow, it's like just in gear, 1.1 1 .1 mile an hour, something like that. That's not a realistic number, okay? One mile an hour, we're not idling one mile an hour. We're really going between three to five mile an hour. So probably realistic and sometimes six. Um, now. That being said, when you go into that three to six miles an hour, what happens? Your bow goes up, okay? And what is that gonna do to your angle of your transducer? It's gonna force that down, ultimately making that transducer angle different. Now, and ultimately giving a worse image of your down imaging, because it's now it's not perfectly horizontal, it's ultimately so. What I suggest, what I suggest, and what I've done over the years is basically offset my transducer to where now I got to compensate for this lift. Ultimately, installing that transducer a couple degrees in the upward upward position, allowing for me to, to reach my average miles per an hour idling. So that's the goal. So I'll show you this here in the back, but that's sort of the mindset behind why I'm doing what I'm doing. Offset it just a couple degrees, probably did that. And, that. and that's another reason why I wanna have a decent amount of clearance between my jack plate 
And, and the, the cool thing about this is I have more amount, a bigger, larger mounting bracket right there, so I have a little more space. You don't need a ton, you just need enough to where it offsets it enough. So that right there should be about perfect. And, and now we just have to ultimately tidy all this up and then go to the water and ultimately test if this is the right angle because each boat is completely different. You can get super scientific with this, to be fair. Like some of my friends, like my buddy Seth Davis, he's ate up with that. Like, oh, it's got to be this, and this is how my, his boat idles, and this is the angle his boat idles at, and this is what it is. And that's, that's cool and all, but a half of a degree is not going to make that much of a difference. A degree and a half, a couple of degrees, two and a half, three degrees is going to make enough of a difference. So let me tighten this guy down a little bit. You've probably seen this a few times on the channel as a wire out of the back of my boat just because at the end of the day, when you hit a log, your transducer goes bad. Obviously, it's a lot easier to do this. The issue is, again, the one issue comes down to is when you do this, you risk the fact of this slack getting into the motor. So I zip tied it several times back there. I've zip tied it right here, lock it in place, not too tight, but tight enough to where it locks it in there and it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it'll, it'll adjust a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Okay. All right, I'm happy with the install, and now it's time to go to the lake and see what this bad boy's made of. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do real quick here as we sort of dial this thing in uh, is, is look at a bridge. I mean, okay, like one thing it, that's important is being able to visually be able to see what structure looks like underneath the water. And so um, right now we're sort of approaching this bridge. You can see some stumps over to the left. On my side, side imaging, um, or the side scan, I can see um, what looks to be like a, a sunken boat or some kind. I can see these rocks starting to come out a little bit. And this is the four, uh, this is 455 chirp right here that I have. So this is not the highest definition. Um, you really see the crappie in, in the middle of you know, my screen between my down. So that's basically the image that you're getting right here is your down imaging is basically showing you what's right here. And so this is basically no man's land inside image, side scan. And this is where your, your crop are. That's why you can sort of see what, you know, what it's, what it's like right there. Um, interesting. So lots of crappie there for sure. Interesting. Yeah, it's whatever. They're not that many up there. See, that's them right there on the crown. That's them right there. Ding, 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 ding. Ah! Itty baby. Itty little baby. There's a good dot right there. Dot. That's what you want to see right there, though. Over here to my left hand side on that down imaging image. You can see the separation of the smaller fish. You see the, how big those bigger fish look. That's a really good image and that's exactly what you wanna see. When you're not seeing that sharp bottom and it's really fuzzy along your bottom, that's basically what that is, is it's just not as good of a return. And you know, your angle could be the, the major issue. And that's what we were talking about before. But seeing what I just saw right there, I feel really confident about where angle placement is. Um, especially at the speed we were going, you know, and that's, you know, we we're going a little slower, but it's not too, I mean, you know, my boat is actually doesn't lift that much when I'm going three miles an hour. So it's, it's about right. All right. So I feel pretty good about my overall look of my transducer and installation looks good my dot my down imaging image looks solid um that's really all there is to it. it's not not too complicated now adding multiple different transducers and doing all that stuff there's a little bit more to all that um but i wanted to give you guys because the majority of 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 bass fish i mean we're only using one transducer one unit and that gives you guys at least an understanding of what some of the things that I sort of went through to try to sort of figure it out. Simple, but yet 
something that has helped me find more fish. And so those subtle little things like that help a lot. And uh, so hopefully you learned something from this video. I appreciate you all. I put it, I gave you a good rundown of everything, but um, I'm always learning. There might be something that I missed. So if you do me a favor, drop me a comment below. Let me know um, if there's something that you think you guys do personally to help, you know, that, that helps with a better image. Maybe it's on a, on a Humber, maybe it's on a Garmin. Let me know, because I don't have necessarily all the experience with all the different brands um, in the same scenario. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. So when I first got out here, I called up the ranch. I was having an issue with the HD transducer connecting to my pro units. I do have all pros here. You can use this with one pro with, with multiple lives, all that stuff. There's some other things that you can use. But real quick here, if you're having the same issue, you're not getting the frequencies that you were, you, you're sort of, we're getting the same frequencies as you had in the original three in one, you just go into the unit that it was plugged into. So in this case, it's actually over here, but I'll go in here and go into sonar. And then I go into installation. Okay, so then I go to my active target. Well, actually, oh, here we go. Active target, so channel two, HDS Pro 12, this one right here. Go down into here, and my transducer type, Boom, the active target HDS that is active, it's not active target, it's, it's uh, active imaging. So, okay, so it's active imaging HD three in one. So you have to select that and then therefore that will ultimately give you the frequencies. The only other thing that you can do that uh, the guys at Lawrence and Jacob Scott let me know was going into sonar and actually going to re-sonar, restored sonar defaults throughout your, your units. That helps it as well. So I restored sonar defaults. I go into sonar in the settings. Then I go into installation. I slide into installation right there. Channel two HDS pro active image HD three, select, select that, go down into here, into the sonar installation, select transducer type, make sure you're on the active imaging HD three and one. And that is what saved, that's, that's what fixed my issue. So something that I, maybe a tidbit of information, maybe helps you uh, 30 minutes throughout your day. You didn't have to, to have to go through that as well. So.